It is about 61 degrees here for first pitch here at Easton Stadium. Ball high to Kylie Shaw. Ranked number 97 in extra inning softball's final rankings for the class of 2020. She is a redshirt freshman and was a four-year varsity standout for Carson High School. Three and zero to Lushar. And this is really what you want out of your leadoff: is have a good quality at bat, see a lot of pitches, try to figure out where that strike zone is. Great call. Strike two. So a full count for Kai Lushar as Sarema works her way back in. And Megan was up in the zone for the last four pitches, caught the top part, the previous pitch, and then went down by the knees. Gets her swinging. First strikeout for Megan Foramo. And a great job of coming from behind. Gets that right outside swing through from Lashar. That'll bring up Hannah Delgado, the sophomore center fielder out of Corona, California. Delgado with a fiery 433 average coming into today's game. And what really stands out to me is her on-base percentage. When you look at that batting average, but over 500 on-base percentage says that she finds a lot of different ways to get on. And that's what you need, you need base runners. Strike on the outside, Connors. Delgado was a third team All Pac 12, All Pac 12 freshman last year. And there's a sophomore occupying the number two spot for Missy Lombardi. To the right side, knocked down from the first. Great play by Anna Vines. This ball looked like it was going to find its way into right field, but Vines, a nice diving stop in the hole, but look at how quickly she transfers and release to get the out. Knows she doesn't have a lot of time, just throws a dart. BB for a strike for the out. Richard Jr. out of Temecula, California. They want her to stay healthy, but she has been fantastic defensively. Allie Bunker steps in to face Ferremo, the senior out of Huntington Beach, California. Popped up to the right side. Lines is going to call it and she'll catch it for the third out of the inning. So three up and three down as we move to the... As Perez steps in. Brianna Perez, Richard senior shortstop out of Martinez, California. was an all Pac-12 first team and defensive team last year. Has been fantastic at the shortstop position. And UCLA has had some really tremendous shortstops in their history. And, and Brianna Perez is really kind of underrated. You know, you, I could say that about some, some athletes, but she has been so consistent throughout her career, but she's quiet and she just gets her, her work done at that position. She's not loud about it, but she's solid. She's been that way since she stepped on campus. 
Egan, yes, throwing some heat to Brianna Perez. Are you surprised that Missy Lombardi went with Hanson, who's just a freshman in game one of the three-game series? You know, at first, yes, but, you know, when you read about what Missy Lombardi thinks about Stevie Hanson and her composure out there, and then also take into account UCLA hasn't faced her, so they don't have a lot of information on her. So maybe it would be a good opportunity to sneak her by, you know, get a game in and um, without having that information. Because you know UCLA is going to take this game, break it apart, take all the analytics like these coaches do today. But um, And sometimes you throw freshmen in the fire and they don't quite feel the same type of pressure that those veterans do who know what UCLA is like. They've been here at Aston Stadium. Full count to Brianna Perez and there is a good Oregon Duck contingent here from Eugene and they thought that was strike three. There's a lot of Southern California kids out there in the field right now. There they are at the green. Here's the 3-2 pitch. That's a field foul. Well, it's got to be pretty cool for Stevie Hansen also. She's not from far. It's about an hour away where she went to high school, hour or so away. So like many of these athletes, this is the biggest softball program around. So a lot of you, you saw the little youngsters on the field early in the game. We spend a lot of time up here. So, you know, I'm sure Stevie is picture herself in this type of atmosphere. 3-2 pitch gets her swinging. First strikeout for the freshman Stevie Hansen. Regains, composes, and throws a nice low rise ball through the zone to Bree Perez. That'll bring up Anna Vines. Vines had a lot of defensive action in that first inning. Red shirt junior out of Temecula, California. Vines in, coming in. Batting 290. Had some shoulder issues earlier in the year, but that pain has subsided in her left shoulder. Foul back. Marina Vines is a very experienced hitter. She's been pretty consistently in the lineup for UCLA throughout her career. And she's had some moments of being real clutch this season, just hasn't found that consistency quite yet. And that's the, the word yet, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why I use that. It's, it's hard to say that about some of these hitters. They're struggling. What does that mean when you're hitting 400 <laughs> or, you know, 350 in Pac-12? But you, know, you see these names and you see them in the box and you expect so much. Two and two. Vines took a cleat in game two of the three game series in Washington, and they thought she would come out of the game. They said it was very gnarly looking, but she refused to come out, stayed in the game, stayed in the lineup, and here she is starting against Oregon. All three. Hansen worked ahead, got two strikes, and now finds herself in a full count. A 3-2 pitch. Hines batted 340 last year, which was fourth best on the squad. To the right side, and that is gloved by K.K. Humphreys for the second out of the inning. So, two up and two down for Stevie Hansen. I'll bring up the number three hitter, freshman Savannah Pola. Pull the freshman right fielder out of Santa Ana, California. She's 
the Pac-12 leader in doubles. He takes strike one. She is one of five lefties in this Bruin lineup. I love that Stevie Hansen's coming inside to these lefties. She's not missing that spot by much. But even if she's off the plate, if she can continue to hit that side inside to the lefty, it'll open out, open up the outside part of the plate. been pitching by committee for Oregon as they lost Brooke Yanez. And for the season due to injury, she will be back next year. That ball is fouled opposite field long. Two and two now to Savvy Pola. And Missy Lombardi was talking to you and I yesterday saying, you know, many people say, well, you lost your lead pitcher. What are you going to do? And she says, we're right in the thick of it. That's to the right side foul. So a lot of firepower, long ball fouls off the bat of Savvy Pola. And Savvy Pola, just a freshman. You know, but she's finding ways to get on, and that's what Coach Hinaway Perez said. She doesn't have the database that a lot of our hitters have on these different pitchers, obviously not Stevie Hansen. But she's figuring it out. That ball is well hit. Off the wall. Here's the throw to second. A two-out double for Savvy Pola. Pulling hard goes right back up the middle off the wall in center field. Delgado read it well off that outfield fence, got it in quickly. The has got some speed, and that will bring up redshirt senior Delaney Wiz. Out of Orchid, California. She is on a 22 game hitting streak. Back through the middle, off the glove of Hansen, and everybody's safely aboard. And Wiz is hitting 533 in Pac 12 play. I'm a little surprised that this pitch was as close as it was to Wiz. You don't want to give her anything too good the way she's seeing the ball right now. But a great job, Hansen, knocking that down and keeping it on the infield to prevent that run from scoring. So already Missy Lombardi comes out of the dugout to talk to her infield and Stevie Hansen, the freshman. What do you say to a freshman? at UCLA in the first with runners on first and third to try and calm her down. First, hey, are you all right? I hit your, <laughs> hit your glove pretty hard. Are you good? Okay, let's, let's not put a pitch there again. How about that? No, you know, I, there's not a lot you can say in this situation. Be you, I guess, you know, don't make it bigger than it is. I know it's UCLA. I know, you know, they've got all these championships, but at the end of the day, you're in the pack too. You belong here and, you, you know, you can hang with these hitters. Just, you gotta hit your spots. And do you say Maya Brady's up? <laughs> and don't pay attention to who steps into the box ever throughout this game. Just throw your pitches. Maya Brady, the red shirts sophomore at 1,000 Oaks, California. The power hitting RBI leader for the Bruins. Has some RBI opportunities. Has runners at first and third with two out here in the bottom of the first. Two and up. Brady was named to the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association All-American and All-Pac-12 first team last year. Here's the 
the 2-0 pitch. Foul back. And when you consider everything that Maya Brady has done to this point, Coach Inouye Perez says the best is yet to come with her. And she's leading this team in RBIs. She's been so clutch throughout her short career so far, but no, she really does believe that there's more on the horizon, which is kind of scary to think. She got a lot of attention her freshman year. Ball is popped up, but it will go foul. So now a 2-2 count. Check that there are seven lefties in the growing lineup. Seven. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. They got her. The second strike. Sid, the senior out of Tracy, California. Coming in with an average of 262. Coach Lombardi said Rachel said was really struggling earlier in the season, but then Pac-12 play hit and she just upped her game another level. So she's hitting 430 in Pac-12 play, which is typically when hitters hit that plateau, you're facing better pitching consistently. But Rachel said she's she's dialed into these Pac-12 pitchers. As you mentioned, 438 average in the Pac-12 for Rachel Sid. Went four for eight in the Cal series with a home run. And raised her season batting average 31 points on the Utah trip where she went four for 12 and scored four runs. This is a team that went two and one versus Cal. That is hit well. Foul ball. Wow. That had a lot of power behind it. Look at that. Pitch in the front leg. That's where she gets all her weight transferred back and just explodes through. That's, you know, it was high and it carried, but it looked like it had potential to be fair for a while. Foul back. When you're in the circle and you see somebody really hit that ball, Hard foul. Do you adjust and think maybe go off speed or? I mean, you could. You really, when you put a pitch inside, you want that to be the result. You want them to turn hard. You just want that ball to go foul. Then you could open up for the off speed or an outside pitch. Full count. Rachel Sid. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Second strikeout for Megan Ferreno. So you just talked about it, Tracy. That turning hard on that inside pitch and then sets her up for this curveball. Look, it just runs away and it's not too far outside, but it's just getting the, he the hitter to look inside to hitch a little quicker than they normally would, and that exposes that outside corner. That'll bring up the number five hitter, KK Humphreys, a sophomore out of Corona, California, transfer from Cal State Fullerton. She was an all Big West first team and freshman team honors while at Fullerton. Fouls that back. You know, you would think facing Big West pitching and coming into Pac-12 play, there'd be an adjustment, but 344, not bad for KK Humphreys. No, not at all. It you know, she's, she's a great hitter, and I would say, you know, Coach Lombardi said she might be struggling a little bit, looking for her to turn that corner this weekend, but. Maya Brady runs that down for the second out of the inning. Up steps Ariel Carlson. The junior out of Eugene, Oregon. He is just one of two players 
from the state of Oregon on this Oregon team. 14 players are from California. Swing and a miss. Which is why we see so many Oregon Duck representatives in the stands tonight. California is the hotbed for high school and summer softball. Faremo's ahead 0-2. Carlson's got a ton of power, leading this team with nine home runs. Pops that back. is fifth best in the nation. They have played the 15 most difficult schedule nationally this season. That just gets more difficult as you come in Pac-12 country. Yeah, last season was different because they incorporated that fourth game into Pac-12 play in softball, and so if the schedule wasn't hard enough, then you add another element, but that's because preseason tournaments weren't really happening, and they were trying to add to the RPI, but I would imagine that it's really nice to settle back into a three-game series. Grounded foul. And to travel and get those preseason tournaments in also. I think it's really fun to be able to go out to Florida, to go out to the Mary Nutter in Palm Springs, and to have the Oklahomas and the Floridas come out and everybody be able to see each other early on and then go off into their respective conferences and meet back up and get again in, in postseason. Here's the 2 2 to Ariel Carlson. That ball is hit well. Out of here. Solo home run. And the Ducks get on the board and lead 1-0 here in the top of the second. This is just a solid at-bat by Carlson, who is down 0-2 and worked her way all the way back to get a pitch that she could handle. Shortens the swing up and just punches it opposite field. Textbook hitter. For Carlson, that is a team leading 10th home run. In steps Tara McGowan. McGowan sporadically seeing action. She has just started five games and played just five games. Now Oregon had her for the first tournament of the season. But she's batting 500 and then went down. So this is the first time she's been back in the game since. Popped up to the right side. And a Vines calls for it and catches it for the third out of the inning. Of the second as the Bruins try and get some runs on the board to answer the Ducks who are ahead 1-0. <laughs> Alyssa Garcia swings strike one. Ariel Carlson picks up her 10th home run. Got the Ducks on the board early. Missy Lombardi said, look, we're going to surprise people. We've got some offense. Yeah, we believe it. And she said they score early in games and they score a ton of runs with two outs. And Ariel Carlson's home run was with two outs. Put Oregon ahead. Yeah. 
Garcia, the 0-2 pitch. Ball low. Shirt sophomore out of Chula Vista, California. Set to take the one two pitch. Two and two. And Garcia is another athlete that's been in and out of the lineup because of injuries, so just really hasn't had a, an opportunity to be consistent. Swing and a miss. Third strikeout for the freshman Stevie Hansen. Hansen is working ahead in the count really well when she's using that low rise ball. It looks really good at the belt and then doesn't move a ton, but it moves plenty to get over the bats. That'll bring up the number seven hitter, Seneca Kuro. Red shirt sophomore out of Verona, California. Kelly Inouye Perez commented on how she is becoming a big bat toward the bottom of the lineup. Hitting anywhere five to seven. Popped up to the right side. Ali Bunker gloves it for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up the pitcher, Megan Faremo. Red shirt junior out of Oceanside, California. You said it, Amanda, she is going to hit. And uh, Faremo taking the towel out of the back part of her pocket. Faremo comes in batting 280 from the number eight spot. And Farima's always been a hitter coming into UCLA. She was swinging it while she was pitching, but UCLA had a lineup where Farima just didn't really fit in. So pitching took over as priority, but then when Alyssa Garcia went down and UCLA found they needed a little more power, they said, well, let's let Megan swing it. And she's been doing a phenomenal job. You were in the lineup for UCLA. When you pitched, you were actually the a big threat for the Bruins. Yeah, I, I hit and pitched and it, you know, it was a different game. It was it was very different. Times have changed. Pitchers specialize a lot more now, but we are seeing, I feel like a reemergence of the hitting pitcher, the the fielding pitcher. But like and Coach Inouye Perez said, Megan Frey, she can swing at a ton, but it's about where you fit into the lineup. And UCLA had always had such a strong offense. I mean, really, one through 15. So it became about the pitching game for Megan, but she's obviously still worked at the craft. And that craft is working well. As she singles and is a two out base runner for the Bruins here in the bottom of the second. Just a nice, short, compact swing. Throws the barrel right at. I mean, she's obviously been working at hitting outside of pitching because she looks so comfortable. And now communicating to her teammates what to look for. That's her eighth hit of the season. And that'll bring up the number nine hitter, the lefty Kelly Gooden. Redshirt junior out of Seal Beach, California. If you take a look at the Oregon defense, they are all in tight. Gooden has some very good speed. So even with two outs here, they do not want to give up the second bounce in the dirt. Hanson will talk things over with catcher Valerie Wong. Now Gooden spends a lot of time 
hitting with Kelly Inouye Perez and the volunteer coach Don Slott, a former Major League Baseball player who invented Right View Pro, which is essentially the computer analytics which break down your swing and really has seen some dividends out of all that work. Strike call. for a single. The second single of this game, and we've got runners on first and second and the top of the order for UCLA. It's just a great at bat by Gooden. She knows she could use the dirt, but that infield's pinched in, so she uses some power in that slap to get it through the infield. And I thought that was a great job of Kylie Shar in left field to go for it because there are two outs. You want to go all out, but you also need to make sure you keep that in front. So she took it on the short hop and pushed it towards the infield. Great job. That'll bring up the top of the order and Brianna Perez who struck out in her first at bat. Fouls that off. You always hear UCLA talk about in-game adjustments, and now this is their second time facing Stevie Hansen, and Perez went after that first pitch. Do you think they're looking to jump on her early? I think that's a good plan. Yeah, you know, that's usually the best pitch you're going to see in your at-bat is that first one, so be on time and be ready. That will go off the shortstop. We're going to send the run home. Here's the throw, the play, the play. runs and RBI and that's why this team is a top 15 team in the nation swing and a miss to Valerie Wong the junior catcher out of Sacramento California This is an Oregon team that's been getting the job done despite not being at full strength throughout the season. We talked about Tara McGowan going down early on, losing Brooke Yanez before the season even started. So those key components that really could have changed the complexion where you feel like could have missing them, but Oregon has been able to regroup and, and really do a nice job throughout the season. Wong went three for nine with two RBI in the Cal series. Again, a series where Oregon went two and one. Strike three. The third strikeout for Megan Foremo. Foremo's attacking the zone. Trying to keep the momentum on the side of the Bruins. A beautifully executed pitch in tight with the low rise. In the first, second, and third inning, Faremo has struck out the leadoff hitter. In steps Paige Sineke for Oregon. To the left side. Long slow, not in time. Paige Sineke is a one-out base runner for Oregon. Look at how deep in the hole Perez goes to get this turns quickly plants and intentionally throws that ball down in the dirt to get it there quicker right off the bat didn't think there was going to be a chance but turned out to be much closer than i thought well when you're Bri brianna perez almost everything is in play I mean, she, <laughs> she can't she's made some plays that i just you give up on and she doesn't tyler shaw struck out in her first at bat Oregon is fourth in the Pac-12 in average, number two in hits in this very tough conference. Fouls that back. Oh 
Lisa Fernandez, former Olympian, All-American, Player of the Year, is the pitching coach for the UCLA Bruins, ever the mastermind. I thought it was so interesting when we talked to Coach Inouye Perez about Lisa Fernandez and what she's been able to do with this pitching staff and the defense and working the defense behind each pitcher and having a plan. Double play, Malolu. Stevie Hansen has been holding the Bruins. This is their second time through the lineup. And this is really where it starts to get difficult when you're facing a team like UCLA who does make in-game adjustments. The best teams do, as Oregon is offensively back at UCLA, but you have to continuously make your own adjustments in the circle. You know, it's hard to believe last year she is a senior in high school, and this year she's in the circle at Easton Stadium taking on the number three team in the nation. One and two to Anna Vines. Great framing the pitch by catcher Valerie Wong. about it. Did she go? She did not. The 2-2 pitch to the left side. And Lussar tracks that down. Kai Lussar gets the first out of the inning. Lushar had to go quite a ways for this. That looked like an inside pitch to Anna Vines as she inside out it created a ton of spin going away for Lushar. I thought she was going to die for it, but ends up reaching it on foot. Lushar's shown a lot of athleticism in that left field. That'll bring up Savannah Pola, who doubled in her first at bat. Takes that first pitch. Hit well, but playable. Helena Delgado gloves it for the second out of the inning. Delaney Woods steps in. She singled in her first at bat. Wiz had the home run in a 5-4 win against Washington on March 27th. Hitting a sizzling 500 in her last 10 games with three home runs in that stretch. Strike call. Transfer from LNU. Played there in 2018 and 2019, where she was named to the All West Coast Conference second team. The 1 1 pitch. Got back. Liz's sister Stevie also attended UCLA. She did not play softball, but it kind of made. She did play softball. She did play softball. She scored the winning run at the Women's World World Series 2019. Did you just put that in his pocket? <laughs> Round ball to the left side. Sid 
Takes it and throws it to first in the top of the fourth to face Megan Faramo. Anna Delgado grounded out to second in her first at bat. Delgado, a sophomore, graduate of Santiago High School, where she batted 414 career batting average with 10 home runs and played travel ball for the 18 under Orange County Batbusters. Doesn't everybody play for the Batbusters? <laughs> it sounds like it, right? It feels like it at times. We know a lot of these coaches, though, these top level D1 coaches, know where to go to find athletes that are seasoned, that have been thrown into the fire, that um, have been able to produce and be successful at that level. And that's the type of athlete that you want to bring on. The one two pitch popped up to the left side. Gooden is underneath it, and she catches it for out number one. And steps the senior, Ali Bunker. Bunker popped up to second base in her first at bat. Bunker had an 18 game hitting streak stopped on March 27th by Cal. It was the longest hitting streak by a duck since 2015. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2 to Allie Bunker. Yeah, absolutely pulled the string on this changeup. Got Allie Bunker way out front. for Megan Faramo. And only Bunker's third of the season. This is a very rare swing and a miss by Ali Bunker. But that's what happens when you get down 0-2 and all of a sudden you find yourself on the defensive and that's not where you want to be when you're facing Faramo. And, and don't you get a little bit in the hitter's head when you do an off speed and you miss by that much? Oh, absolutely. Because you think she, she'll throw it again. I got to look for that. I got to look for the high hard. Up steps Rachel Sid, who struck out in her first at bat. You actually sound like you like that a little too much, that <laughs> off-speed kill. I loved throwing the off-speed pitch because it does. It gets in the hitter's head when you can throw it for a strike. Fell back. I feel like Faramo has stepped it up a notch. She just really seems intentionally focused here in the top of the fourth. And throwing harder, if that's possible. <laughs> Strike two called. Took something off of that as well. And really throwing with more conviction, as you said. Even with that changeup, we've seen a couple of really nice changeups that we weren't seeing executed earlier in the game, whether that was by design because she wasn't needing to use it, or it's just working better. Rachel Sid fouls that off. Looked like it might have hit Delaney Wiz. And here comes Lisa Fernandez. And these catchers. What they go through for the team, and she's just gonna walk that off a minute. She's smiling, so that's a good thing. Get her up in the chest plate. That was smacking the helmet. Well, she's smiling, and that's a good sign for the red shirt senior catcher. Great sportsmanship if Sid just checks on her as well.
Here's a 2-2 pitch. Grounded to the left side. And the, cross, and the third out of the inning. Three up. And, three. and now you guys have consolidated them, so there's room for more. And Kelly, in a way, Perez is like, oh, yeah, we're going full steam ahead <laughs> to Oklahoma City, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, it's such an exciting time of year. And the Bruins have just been on a run. And, you know, it's tough. It's tough to get there. It's tougher to come out on top. And the fans that come out now is Maya Brady in her second face and gets her first hit of the game off Stevie Hansen here to lead off the bottom of the fourth. She's got such a mature approach. Look at how she's quick, short to the ball. Doesn't even really follow through, but she's got so much power in her swing. And to lead off the fourth with a single is good news for the Bruins. That'll bring up the number six hitter, Alyssa Garcia, who struck out in her first at bat. Goes after the first pitch, popped up, but into the screen. That was a tough pitch by Hansen. Garcia playing only 15 of the 31 games so far, coming in with an average of 296. Has not seen as many pitches as some of her teammates as she fouls that back. Catch up to pitches that are mid to high 60s. And I think that's where Coach Anyway Perez is saying she just hasn't had an opportunity to settle in and become consistent because she's been in and out. Always been a very good hitter, but the pitching is tough, especially in the pack. Ball one to Alyssa Garcia. Maya Brady led off the bottom of the fourth with a single. On deck, Seneca Kuro. Swing and a miss. The fourth strikeout for Stevie Hansen. And Hansen throws this pitch inside that just cuts hard and down. She's thrown that a couple of times this game where you just, it looks impossible to put the bat on the ball. She's been tough to the lefties, especially. Seneca Kuro popped up to second base in her first at bat. A 2.83 average for the redshirt sophomore. Is a hit. Brady will go on and take third. Kirk Walker sends her home. Here's the throw. Not in time. We got a tie ball game here in the bottom of the fourth. RBI for Seneca Kuro. Nicole with a nice hit in the right center field and a little bit of miscommunication. Both outfielders think the other's taking it. The ball drops for just a split second and that allows Maya Brady to come around. And I think Brady thinks she's in no problem standing up, doesn't realize the ball is gonna be that close. It's Coach Lombardi is asking how that could have been the call at home. Take a look at Brady approaching the plate. She, she missed the tag. It, it looked like Valerie Wong went to tag her and she got her after Brady touched home plate. But it was, it was close. Megan Farima going to try and help out her cause. She singled in her first at bat. 
She has Curl on second. And one out here in the bottom of the fourth. like the game Stevie Hansen has thrown so far. Just a freshman taking on an offense which has the sex, second best average in the Pac-12. Fouls that back. Stevie Hansen looking down at her wristbands where she's getting the pitch. Got her swinging. The fifth strikeout for the freshman Stevie Hansen. That is a big out in Farima. And a great response after that play, giving up a run and then bouncing right back and getting a tough hitter in Farima. That's a great point. Composure is key. It's how you respond to it. That'll bring up Kelly Good, the number nine hitter singled in her first at bat. Fouls that off. The pitcher Hansen, a California product out of Norco High School, is rated a top 10 prospect in the class of 2021. the third ranked pitcher nationally. Lays down the punt, throw the first, in time! But She's, not, she just gets tougher as the game goes on. She has allowed just two hits. It's burnt by K.K. Humphreys. Loved the throw, first out of the inning. Now ready for the left, director number three, Ariel Carlson. That'll bring up Ariel Carlson, who is responsible for the Ducks' only run. She hit a solo home run in the second to put the Ducks on the board. Oh. Speed strike one. using that a lot now. I like it, the off-speed pitch. And I would to a hitter like Carlson. She's very aggressive. It's got a ton of power. Big swing and a miss. It was a swing like that in the second inning off the bat of Ariel Carlson, which went yard. Solo home run, and that put Oregon ahead 1-0 in the second. UCLA has since tied it. And Carlson fouled that back. Carlson hit three consecutive home runs in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games against Long Beach State, UNC Greensboro, and Penn State and has been just a fantastic long ball hitter for the Ducks since she set foot on the campus in Eugene, Oregon. Did she go? She did not. Home plate umpire Eddie Cooper asked Ron Burkhardt, who said, she did not go. The whole body went, the barrel did not. I, I think that's a great job of holding up. third baseline. Yeah, that's, that change of, it's really effective and really tough when you throw as hard as Megan does as well. And, and she'll hit that inside corner, so not only do you have to sit back and look 
for an off-speed pitch, but you have to be able to react quickly to that hard inside. Fouls that bad. As we mentioned, Oregon went two and one against Cal. In the Pac-12 series prior to that, they went 2-1 and one versus Utah, winning a game against BYU in between. Off speed, that ball is just foul. And it will be an all Pac-12 April for both of these teams. It's a little souvenir for some fans. to the left, family to the right. When you see that as a pitcher, what's your thought? Uh, what am I gonna throw? <laughs> it, gets, it gets frustrating, it's annoying, you know, because you, you know, I would throw off speed. I would go right back to it and throw it in that same spot in the dirt again, one hop it. All low. So a full count to Ariel Carlson, the hitter who is responsible for the lone run for the Ducks. That is the first walk given up by Megan Faremo. Well, and that's why Megan has been as good as she's been this season, is she just doesn't allow base runners. And, you know, you talk about that whip performance by the pitchers, and Faremo's is under one. It's .74, so she just does not allow runners on base. McGowan goes after the first pitch, sky high to the left side, Gooden underneath, and gloves it for the second out of the inning. UCLA, the second best fielding average in the Pac-12, only two, the Oregon Ducks. Valerie Wong steps in. She struck out in her first at bat. Strike call. I think what's impressive about that stat also is both of these teams have said how diverse they are, how deep they are, and how often they change. So there are a lot of moving parts with injuries in and out, youngsters stepping in, and even with all those moving parts have managed to maintain a high level of excellence defensively. Throw it first, not in time, but that was close for Ariel Carlson. Who is showing off her arm. Up out of the crouch. Nice throw, nice tag, very close. Go to pitch, ball one. You know, when you talk to both of these coaches, and if the time the postseason rolls around, they say there's no better conference to prepare you for the postseason like the Pac-12. The level of play is at its best. The pitching is at its finest. The strategy is supreme. And next year, we're going to have a Pac-12 conference tournament for the first time, which will be really interesting. Rotating from each site to each site, so each team gets a chance to host that tournament. Runners going, hit and run. Ground ball to third, throw to first, to the third out of one, two, and three. Here in the bottom of the fifth to face Stevie Hansen. First pitch swinging. That ball is off the wall for Brianna Perez. She is going to third. Brianna Perez leads off the bottom of the fifth with a triple.
Perez using the wall to her advantage. She hit this ball so hard that it comes clear back into shallow center field. Santana Delgado running a long ways, but Blue Perez so fast, and she's rounding, heading for third with her eye on the ball. Sets UCLA up nicely here. That is a team leading sixth triple for Brianna Perez. You know, you look at Kirk Walker, the third base coach, and he is, his arm is almost always waving go. I don't know that I've ever seen him hold a runner up. Was he always that aggressive on the bases? Well, I think he just knows that they're not going to stop, so I'm just going to go <laughs> with it. But you could see the way that Brie Perez rounded first base that she was anticipating going to third, so it almost would have been more work to hold her up. But to be able to get that out, it had to be a quick, clean, nice, strong throw. Everything would have had to go right for the Ducks. So I, you don't want to be the out at third, but I, I take my chances with Perez on those pads. Kirk Walker was an assistant, a longtime assistant to Sharon Backus Sewingquist. He then went to Oregon State, took the head coaching job, came back to UCLA to assist Kelly Inouye Perez and Lisa Fernandez. He has been a fantastic mainstay for the UCLA Bruins. So with a runner on third and no outs, Anna Vine steps in. First pitch swinging. They look back the runner at first, does KK Humphreys, and tags Vines for the first out of the inning. That's just a great job by Humphreys at first base. She's playing up the line, and Anna Vines just turned on that pitch. And this blindly to Humphreys, who smothers it and makes the out. Savannah Pola is one for two on the day with a double in the first and a pop out to center field in the third. Strike one. I feel like the Bruins are attacking first pitch. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it's a great plan, but you also have to understand where you are in the ball game, the situation with the runner on third base and not get too big in that first swing. Make sure it's there and you're on time. Hansen now ahead of Pola, 0-2. But Pola is definitely a hitter in this lineup. I could say that about almost all of them, really, that you want to be careful with, especially with the runner in scoring position on third. Now you have her down 0-2. Here is the 0-2 pitch. Ball low. Pola has put, played right field, second base, double play, so long as that freshman bat is in the lineup. Boy, that took guts to watch. <laughs> I felt the same way. It doesn't seem like it's been called all game, but when you've got two strikes and a runner on third, you just hold your breath. You don't ever want to leave that in the hands of the umpire. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And that will bring him the go-ahead run. Two to one, UCLA here in the bottom of the fifth. Just solid swinging by Pola. That pitch down in the way keeps her head down to the opposite field. Mushar has been so solid out there in left field. It goes off her glove. Even if she catches that, Brie Perez is hanging out at third base. She's tagging. She would have scored. But now you've got Pola standing up on second. Savannah Pola works her way back and picks up her 13th double of the season, her second this game, and gives the Bruins the 2-1 lead. Pinch runner for UCLA, Kinsley Washington will run for Pola. <laughs>
In steps the number four hitter, Delaney Wiz. She goes after that first pitch, foul back. Washington had sprained her thumb. Out on second base, she is wearing that, of course, glove on her hand. As Wiz hopes to add on to the Bruin lead. See the glove on that left hand. A lot of more athletes are wearing those gloves to protect their hands. Sent foul down the left field line. For a Friday night, this stadium is almost full. And we are just in the beginning of April. It is uh, just starting to get exciting here in softball country, but it's always exciting in Pac-12 country. Yeah, this time of the year gets fun and it moves so quickly you know pac 12 starts and before you know it it's over and we're into the postseason and to Nikki, who will double up the Bruins. Farimo, who has given up only two hits in this ball game. First pitch swinging, sent to the left side. Kelly Gooden underneath, and catches it for the first out of the inning. We've seen a lot of high fly balls out of the Oregon offense, and you know, Farimo throws a lot of spin a lot of rise ball spin, so it's tough to barrel up. You need to make just a little bit more of an adjustment to the top part of the ball. But the swings look nice. That'll bring up the top of the order for Oregon. Bouchard. 0 for 2. Looking for her first hit of the game. going for it. You have to make a quick decision, and then it's a foot race between Lashar and Vines, but look at how quickly she gets down the base pass. Just no play. So the tying run is aboard. The go-ahead run is at the plate in Hannah Delgado. First pitch strike to Hannah Delgado, who is looking for her first hit of this game. Delgado, a 424 average. Has the pop and the power that has Missy Lombardi putting her in the number two spot, but she now has to come back from a deficit 0 and 2. Slaps that to the left side. He throws it to first. Fantastic defense by the Bruins. He couldn't miss so quick. It's like Lashar in left field. They can just get to balls that normal outfielders 
can't get to. Gooden's got such good foot speed, and then she's going all the way across the diamond. Bouchard was practically standing on second base, but you know, when you've got that kind of speed, you can you can risk it a little more. Allie Bunker steps in. Swinging first pitch, fouls that back. You know, I'm impressed by Gooden. Her read off the bat is phenomenal because it's that first step that makes the difference, and she is right on it. Yep, absolutely. And as an outfielder, that does make all the difference, is reading, anticipating, and getting those first couple of steps off quickly. That ball is going to fall in for a hit. Here comes the runner to third, safe. And now the Ducks have runners at second and third here in the top of the six. So two outs, Lashar on first base. She's going on contact. She's going all the way to third. Gooden gets this ball quickly. Looks like she's going to third. Just a little bit of an overthrow. Ends up going home, but... Ducks on second and third. Well, here is some of the high-octane offense you're seeing from Oregon and Lisa Fernandez with the number four hitter stepping in and Rachel Sid wants to talk things over with the UCLA Bruins. So Sid is 0 for 2 on the day. But with runners at second and third and a couple of hits this game, is this a kind of a settle down, let's have some strategy? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, and Sid has been doing great in Pac-12 play. So you have to take that into account that you do have first base open, although, you, you know, KK Humphreys <laughs> isn't hitting their shabby batting average either. So, you know, if you've got Megan Framer out there, you just, it's more of a reset, let's regroup, let's get after this. We've got two outs, make a play, and let's get in the dugout. Ball one. I rarely have seen, and you've played for the Bruins, have seen the Bruins not go at someone. I, I rarely see a free pass given by the Bruins. Yeah, and it, when, when you have it and it's called on, you don't want to. <laughs> but you've got to be smart, too. Have you ever been told to walk somebody and you're like, nope, no, nope, I'm going to shake that off. I don't see that coming in. I mean, I give the stink eye, but I still do it because my coach has asked me to do it. Because as a pitcher, you think, I can get her. But, you know, again, you've got to be smart. Play the game. That ball is up. Called for by the second baseman, Vines. And she'll love it for the third out of the inning. In the right now, UCLA with a tough Maya Brady up, looking to put a couple more on. Going after the first pitch again, Brady pops that up to the shortstop, Paige to Nikki for the first out of the inning. Alyssa Garcia looking her, for her first hit of the evening, struck out in her first two at bats. Oregon Stevie Hansen, just a freshman, throwing a fantastic game against the number three team in the nation in UCLA. The team was ahead. Bruins fought back. In the fourth, and then went ahead in the fifth. She is trying to shut the door to them here in the bottom of the sixth. 2-0 pitch. Strike call. If you're the Oregon coaching staff, you have to be happy with what you've gotten out of your freshman tonight. She's given this team every opportunity to stay in this ball game and to come away with a win. Any coach will tell you you've got to score runs to win a game. So Oregon just has to score. That ball is hit hard.
Garcia's first home run of the season. And this is a big home run for Garcia and a big run for UCLA. Taking them into the seventh inning, Oregon down to three outs. UCLA puts another run on the board. And that is classic UCLA. She had gone 0 for 2, struck out twice. As a designated player, they don't pull her, they keep her in, and she hits the solo home run. Fantastic showing for Alyssa Garcia. Seneca Kuro looks to keep the offense going here for the UCLA Bruins here in the bottom of the sixth. She is one for two on the evening. Strike call. Fouls that back. Puro is out of La Mesa, California, which is very close to San Diego State. She has four older brothers, and she decided to come to UCLA because she said it felt like family. Did you get that feeling when you came here? I, I absolutely did, and I still have that feeling. We get together very often, and I'm very proud of our alumni and to be a part of that, and that was one of the biggest draws to UCLA for me. when you go to Oklahoma City when UCLA is at the Softball College World Series and you see buses full of UCLA fans and alums. Uh, they even rent out motorhomes so you can all congregate and kind of welcome each other and celebrate kind of the, the new successes of the new teams coming forward. It's pretty powerful. And then you see these alumni come back and give back and we'll talk a lot more about Shelly Carlin and Kelly Inouye Perez being the Shelly Carlin head coach at UCLA and that endowment. And Shelly Carlin was an athlete here at UCLA, played softball, and are now is the largest former female athlete donor at UCLA, which it just goes to show the history of this program and the support of the alumni. Carlin donated $1 million. She was a 1982 graduate, and it endowed the head coaching position for Kelly Inouye Perez. Her fouls that off. And at a time in 2022 when head softball coaches' salaries are in the million plus, including Patty Gasso at Oklahoma, and you look at some of the other coaches, Mike White at Texas, Heather Carr at Washington, to get Kelly Inouye Perez that bump and get her salary competitive is part of what you said, Amanda. It's the Bruin bubble giving back. Absolutely. The 2-2 pitch. Off-speed foul. We are up to 92 pitches for the freshman, Stevie Hansen. We are approaching our second hour, full hour of softball here at Easton Stadium. Swing and a miss. Six strikeout for Hansen. It's a great setup pitch by Hanson, gets her turning hard and then rides this curveball right to the outside corner, perfectly placed. That is the second time in this game that UCLA has scored, and then Hanson came back and struck out the following hitter. She did it in the fourth, and she did it after the Garcia solo home run. That'll bring up Megan Faremo. One for two with a single in the second. She was thrown out at home plate in a headfirst 
slide. Which Coach Emily Perez <laughs> probably didn't appreciate so much when you got your starting pitcher. You love the aggressive nature of that, and I was a head for slide athlete into second base, but there's just something about going into home when you've got that geared up catcher. And it was a pretty slide, don't get me wrong. I mean, she looked good doing it, but. Here comes Saremo with that head first slide. And Amanda Freed's eyes got so big. <laughs> that ball has popped up. It is playable and caught for the third out of the inning of softball. Five, six, and seven here for Oregon here in the top of the seventh. They've got some catching up to do, and K.K. Humphreys is hoping to get them started. She is 0 for 2 in the evening. Off-speed pitch, fouls that back. You know, for Ramo, the, the story is she pitched against Virginia Tech in the Super Regionals, and everybody expected her, along with Rachel Garcia, to kind of carry the team in the College World Series. Well. It didn't work out that way. Lo and behold, the report was she had a hand injury, and it turned out to be a broken hand. And she did not make the trip to Oklahoma City, leaving Rachel Garcia to pitch the entire time. And UCLA falling to Oklahoma, who eventually won their fifth national championship. Yeah, you know, Oklahoma City is tough enough when you're at full strength. But when you're not, it's, I don't want to say it's insurmountable, but, you know, you put your best effort out there on the field, but it's tough, even for Rachel Garcia, who knows at the top of her game during that time, you just, you just want to be at full strength. And everybody was surprised when Megan wasn't there. You know, UCLA made the best of that trip. They went out and had a good time, had a, a good showing, but didn't get the result that they wanted. I know everybody had pinned it to be an Oklahoma-UCLA final, and, it didn't work out. Well, this puts a pin in KK Humphreys, a fifth strikeout for Megan Farina. That'll bring up Ariel Carlson, responsible for the lone duck run this game with the solo home run in the second. Swing and a miss. Strike one. But Carlson came out swinging her last at bat also and ended up drawing a walk. UCLA ahead by two. You don't want to allow out any, any base runners. So we know how quickly the tables can turn with one swing of the bat. Strike call. Carlson with the team best 10 home runs. Has a lot of power, but now is behind the count 0 and 2. feel up here the speed differential from Ferrema's off speed to when she's just letting it fly and trying to catch up to that feels like it's about a 10 to 50 mile per hour difference yeah you're right on with that tough to adjust to there it is the second strikeout of this inning and the sixth of the game for Megan Ferrema who's just bearing down here at the top of the seventh Attack in the zone. She gets Ariel Carlson looking really aggressive on the key and then pulls the string back on that changeup. 
Oregon is down to their final out, and Tara McGowan. Well, it's nothing like jumping back into the season against Megan Foremo. Who is quickly ahead, 0 and 2 on McGowan. Strong fashion as UCLA beats Oregon. 